I have often seen people getting confused between binary trees and binary search trees. Well, they are same where each node can have a maximum of two children, but there is a primary difference between them. In a binary search tree, all of the nodes on the left subchild will be smaller than the root and all of the nodes on the right subtree will be greater than the root. So based upon this idea, there is a problem available on hacker rank where you are given a binary tree and you have to determine if this is actually a binary search tree or not. So let us see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we are going to see why a conventional approach will not work for this question and how do you need to take into account different kind of tree traverses to arrive at an efficient solution. And then, as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. So, first of all, let's make sure that we are understanding this problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a binary tree and you have to determine if it is a binary search tree or not. Okay. So what is the primary difference between a binary tree and a binary search tree? Well, the common factor is that each node can have a maximum of two children, right? And hence the name binary. But in a binary search tree, all of the nodes on the left tree will be smaller and all of the nodes on the right subtree, they will be larger than the root node. Correct. And that condition is true for each and every node in the binary tree, right? So. Technically, you can say that every binary search tree is a binary tree, but not the other way around. So let us understand this with two example test cases. For example, in a test case number one, if you look at some of these nodes, for example, when I look at node number five, then on the left, I have a smaller node that is one and on the right, I have a larger node that is four. So this node is satisfying the criteria of a binary search tree, correct? But for this complete tree to be a binary search tree, each of these nodes should satisfy this criteria. If you look at this node with the value three, on the left, I have a larger value, right? And that is five. And on the right, I have a smaller value and that is two. So this means that this tree is not a binary search tree. And in this scenario, you have to return no as your answer, correct? In our second test case, you can see that in all of our nodes, wherever we go. On the left, I have a smaller element and on the right, I have a larger element. Even if you look at this node number nine, then all of these nodes, they are smaller than nine, correct? And if you look at node number 11, all the nodes in the left tree are smaller than 11 and all the nodes in the right tree are larger than 11. So you can see that this property is true for each and every node in this binary tree. When such a condition is true, you can say that, okay, this binary tree is indeed a binary search tree. So for this particular test case, you will return yes as your answer, correct? So now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, stop the video right over here and try out the problem on your own first. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. If you're familiar with some of the tree traversers and some of the problems that I have been solving on trees, I always recommend that a level order traversal technique is always your friend because that helps you to iterate your tree iteratively, right? One step at a time. But in such a scenario, this level order traversal technique might not be very handy. Why is that so? For one moment, you can feel that, okay, what I can do is I can start doing one level at a time. And then for every node that I encounter, I can check if the left node is smaller and the right node is larger, correct? And if this is true for every node, it should be a binary search tree, correct? So what you will do is, okay, you can see that, okay, you start traversing, you see the value 11, and then you see, okay, nine is on the left and that is smaller, 15 is on the right and that is larger. So this satisfies your criteria, right? Now what you're going to do is you will move on to the second level. In the second level, you see the node nine, and then on the left, you see node three, which is smaller. On the right, you don't have anything, so that's fine. Then you see node 15 on the left, you don't have anything. And on the right, you have 17 and that is larger. Okay, fine. So what you're going to do is you will do this for the next level and then the next level. And you can say that, okay, looks good. With a level order traversal technique, I was able to say that, hey, this tree was a binary search tree. But wait a minute. What happens if I add one node in this binary tree that looks something like this? Now, what do you do? 
If you start doing your level order traversal technique again, when you look at node 11, on the left you have a smaller node 9 and on the right you have a greater node 15. So far so good. With 9 also your condition will be satisfied. And when you come at 15 and you look at the left nodes and the right node of 15, the left node is 10 that is smaller than 15 so that is good and the right node is 17 and that is greater than 15. So this node kind of satisfies the criteria that the left child is smaller and the right child is greater. But when you look at this entire tree in general, then all of these nodes, they should be greater than 11, right? But you can see that 10 is smaller than 11. So this particular tree, this will not be a binary first tree anymore, right? So now what do you do? You may feel that, okay, you have to keep a track of the maximum element and the minimum element. And then somehow you can see that the solution is getting very, very complex. So that is why a traditional technique of doing level order traversals will not work in this scenario. We have to think something else. Other than the level order traversal techniques, what other techniques do we know about? Let us do a quick recap about them. So let us say I have this generic tree in front of me where I have a root and on the left I will have its entire left subtree and on the right I will have its entire right subtree. So this is a complete tree in general. But right now I have just represented it with small annotations, correct? Now, what are the three techniques that we know about? We know about a pre-order traversal, a in-order traversal and a post-order traversal. And if you quickly try to remember, how do those work? In a pre-order traversal, we have root first, then the left subtree and then the right subtree, correct? So this is a pre-order traversal because root came pre. That is how I remember things. Next you have an in-order traversal. That means first the left subtree, then your root, and then the right subtree. That is in order about how you are going, right? That is how I remember things. Again, I say that. And then you have a post-order traversal. That means the root will come at the very end. So then you have a left subtree, the right subtree, and then ultimately the root. So this is how all of these three techniques look like, correct? Now, what I want you to focus on is that I want you to focus on the in-order traversal. Just try and observe what is happening over here. First of all, we get the left subtree, then we get the root, and then we get the right subtree. So what is this telling you? In a binary search tree, the left node is smaller, then you have the root node, and then you have the right subtree, correct? That is how the binary search tree works, right? So, if I do an in-order traversal of a tree and then I get a sorted sequence, that means I have just done an in-order traversal of a binary search tree. So just try to think like this. Suppose I have a tree like 3, then 1, and then 5, right? Now, what will be a pre-order traversal of it? The pre-order will be root, then the left, and then the right, correct? Next, what will be the in-order traversal? In order will be 1 and then 3 and then a 5, right? And what will be the post-order traversal? The post-order traversal will be left, then the right, and then the root. So now you can see that when this tree was a binary first tree, then doing an in-order traversal gave you a sorted sequence. So we can say the opposite thing as well, right? That if on doing an in-order traversal, I get a sorted sequence, then the tree will be a binary search tree. I believe this is making some sense now, correct? Because when you're doing an in-order traversal, then tree being a recursive property, all of this left subtree, this will also become in a sorted fashion. Then you have the root, and then you have all the elements greater than the root again in a sorted fashion. And that will be only possible when your tree is a binary search tree. Just look at one more example. Suppose I have this tree. Now you can clearly see that this is not a binary search tree. If I try to do an in-order traversal of this tree, what will I get? I will get 7 and then 3 and then 2. This is not sorted in the ascending order, correct? So we can clearly see that this was not a binary search tree. So based on this concept, just form a basic idea that if on doing an in-order traversal of trees, you get a completely sorted sequence, then your tree was a binary search tree. Otherwise, that can never be possible, right? 
And if you want to do a quick recap about how these pre-order, in-order and post-order traversals work, I'm including a link in the description below and feel free to check those out first. Now let us try to verify our idea and see if we can use this to arrive at a solution. So once again, I have these original two examples of tree in front of me and let us try to perform an in-order traversal on them. For an in-order traversal, you know that we have to do the left subtree first, then the root and then the right subtree. So in our first example, this is my left subtree and then this is my right subtree, right? So what I'm going to do is first I will do the left subtree, then I have the root and then I have the right subtree, correct? Now going recursively, I will look at my left subtree now, correct? In my left subtree, I will apply the same concept. So the left subtree, then the root and then the right subtree. So populating these values, I have my left subtree then the root and then the right subtree, correct? Once again, I see this left subtree has another child tree and I will apply the same concept in this. That is the left subtree, then the root and then the right subtree. So I will finally get one, three, five, and then a nine. And then I do not have any right subtree over here. So this will remain blank. I'm done with my root and now I'm left with my right subtree and Applying the recursion on this, I have my left subtree as empty, then I have a root as 15 and then the right subtree as 17. So populating all of these values, I get a 15 over here and then a 17 over here. So this is how my in order traversal looks like. And if you notice closely, this is sorted in an ascending order, correct? Since this is in ascending order, you can safely say that this tree is a binary search tree and you can simply return yes as your answer. Now to verify that this solution also works when the tree is not a binary search tree, let us take up our original second example. Once again, what we're going to do is we will apply the in order traversal. So the left subtree, then the root and then the right subtree. So I have three parts, the left subtree, then the root and then the right subtree. Correct. Now recursively apply the in order technique on the left subtree you have left subtree, root, and then the right subtree. So one, five, and four. And then applying the same technique on the right subtree, you have the left subtree that is empty, then two, and then a six. So I will get two, and then a six over here. Now, if you notice, this in order traversal, this is not in an ascending order. And hence, you can safely say that this tree was not a binary search tree, and simply return no as your answer. So based upon this idea, let us now quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have this sample tree with me that is passed in as an input parameter to the function check BST. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving on with the dry run, the first thing that we do is we create a list that will store my in-order traversal of this tree. So I have this list with me where I'm going to store all of my numbers. Now, what you need to do is you need to populate this list, right? So to do an in order traversal, we take the help of a helper function. This helper function is nothing but doing a in order traversal on this tree. Once again, if you want to revise how the in order traversal works, there is a link in the description below. In this method, what I simply do is instead of printing out the value, I will add the value of the node to my list. And then when this method ends, this list, this will be populated with the in order traversal of the actual tree. So in this scenario, it gets populated like this. So most of the part is done now. All that is remaining is you need to run a for loop. And in this for loop, you just need to check if this list is actually sorted. So you take up the previous element in a, in a variable and then run a loop from the second element all the way up to the end. At every element, you will compare if this element is larger than the previous value. If yes, you are going ahead in the correct direction and it is a sorted list. Otherwise, at any given moment, you change the value of if binary search tree to false. That means it is not a binary search tree and then you will return this value as your answer. There is also one special case in this problem and that is of duplicate nodes. What I mean is that you can also have a test case where you have your tree something like this. 
So you can see that this value is a duplicate, right? And when it is a duplicate, this is once again not a binary search tree. And to handle this scenario, I have done a less than or equal to sign. So even if you find an equal value, then it is not a binary search tree, right? So summarizing all of this, the time complexity of this solution will be order of n because you are traversing through the entire tree and the space complexity of this solution will also be order of n because first of all, you need a recursive stack to iterate through your entire tree and then you need some space to store your list. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that this is one of those problems where different kind of tree traverses actually come in handy. You must have wondered why studying in order, pre-order, post-order, like where do you actually even need them? So in this kind of scenarios where a binary search tree doing an in order traversal will give you a sorted array, correct? Similarly, there could be other problems where a pre-order traversal or a post-order traversal comes in handy. I'll give you a hint. This is really helpful when you're solving mathematical expressions. So have you found some problems that work upon the same idea? It's just a hint. So try to figure it out. Anyways, while going through this entire video, did you face any problems or have you seen any other problems which cannot be solved using the level order traversal technique? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.